everyone, today's video is a head to toe, start to finish, get ready with me. I'm in my pajamas, my face is clean and skincare applied, but I thought I would take you through the whole getting ready with me part. Makeup, hair, outfit. And today's video is sponsored by Nordstrom and everything that we're going to be using, talking about and wearing is also from Nordstrom. And be sure to check the description box so you can get all of the details. The reason that I bring up the description box is I'm gonna try to do my makeup in real time, meaning I'm not gonna spend as much time talking you through each product and everything that I'm using that adds a lot of time to the process. And in real life, when I'm not filming myself putting makeup on, it does go pretty quickly. In the makeup of the day part, I thought I would feature some of the products that I've been reaching for most recently. I've simplified things a tiny bit. I mean, this is me, I still like my makeup, but Specifically, I've streamlined my eye makeup the last few days. And I'm really enjoying it. I'm just using my tried and true favorites, the stuff that's sitting right in the front of my makeup drawer that I reach for on a pretty much daily basis. So like I said, skin is prepped. And we're gonna start, as always, with my Trish McAvoy Instant Eye Lift. Just draw a little triangle underneath each eye. I know I said I'm not talking you through it, and here I am talking you through it. And I'm not rushing per se, but I am kind of doing this in the amount of time that it would normally take. I don't know what bit me there, but it's finally healing. At least the swelling is gone. Okay, for foundation, this is an oldie but a goodie. It's the Nude Illusion from Wonder Beauty. I also have a really nice bruise going on here. I did get, oh, we can chat. I did get Botox recently. I found a new dermatologist that I'm really, impressed with. I go for my follow-up. Well, when you've seen this, I already have gone for my follow-up. She doesn't schedule follow-ups as a routine thing, but for new patients, she does. She wants to see how things go. So I didn't get Juvo. I've been getting Juvo for the last, I don't know, year and a half or so, but apparently they went out of business. So it's back to Botox, which is fine by me. And I got the usual, which is all in my forehead, crow's feet, and then a little bit in the corner of each eye. I think I just said crow's feet. Hello, Marnie. And then a couple new spots. I've never done it before. One is under my eyes, not right up close, but right along here. She said it wouldn't completely get rid of the fine lines and creases right here, but it would significantly help. And I have to say it really has. And then she also did something I've heard about forever and never really paid any attention to. She did Botox in my lip. It's called a lip flip. I can't remember if it was four units or eight units, but it she did put numbing cream on. It hurt a little bit, but it wasn't anything nearly as bad as when I've had actual filler. And all it seems to have done is just slightly puff out my top lip. And it's the exact look I've been trying to get for a long time. And it's much more cost effective. I think it was like $54. Now it only lasts about eight to 10 weeks, she said, we shall see. But even if I have to go every eight weeks, it still won't cost as much as getting filler and there's no downtime and there was no bruising. So I am happy. All right, I'm gonna really quickly put on my under eye concealer and then we'll finish up the rest. I do have to set my under eye concealer, but before I do that, I wanna use some concealer here. Not a lot, the um, Nude Illusion Foundation is pretty good coverage. I did finally pick up the Lancome Tent Idol ultra wear concealer, but I got it in a shade to match my face and not so much my under eye. I'm really liking it. I love how easily it blends in. It's incredible coverage and it feels really lightweight. I think on quick makeup days, if I didn't want to do a full foundation, I could easily just put the concealer where I need it and kind of sheer it out and that would work great. I do use two different powders. I use the By Terry Hyaluronic Powder under my eyes really quickly. And then I use the Laura Mercier translucent setting powder on the rest of my face. So that's the update on the dermatologist. So far I'm really pleased and I really like how my lips turned out. It's not overinflated or too much. I think it's just a nice subtle difference. I have been contouring my face a lot lately and I've dialed that back a little bit and I'm really just doing my nose. I just like how it looks. I can easily skip it. When I skip it, I just end up taking bronzer and just going down the side of my nose. But I thought I would 
just do my nose. I've been skipping the cheekbones and the rest of my face. And then I just take my same foundation brush and really blend that in. How many times have you seen me use this? The Too Faced bronzer. I'm actually using a Too Faced brush. And I'm just use the mirror, slapping that on. It smells so good. And if you get any of the powder on your lips, it actually does taste like chocolate. And then I always make sure I go over the sides with, of my nose with the bronzer and kind of sweep it across my cheeks too, hoping to blend that contour in a little bit. And then I always like to kind of layer my face product. So next actually is highlighter and then the blush goes last. And I'm glad to see, at least the last time I checked, that this is back in stock. It's the new one from Laura Mercier and it's been selling out like crazy. It's the Rose Glow Highlighter and it's said to adapt to all skin tones. It's really pretty. And then this little beauty is the Chantecai Blush. So on a daily basis, I if I'm not leaving the house, I don't even bother with makeup. But if I'm leaving the house, I do put on a full face of makeup and I do enjoy it. I've said it before, it's like my arts and crafts project, but it's on my face. We recently went to Cheap Trick, Cheap, Cheap Trick concert, and I was talking to a woman sitting next to us while we were waiting to start, and she was about my age, maybe four or five years older, I think, and um, strangely, we went to see the concert in Austin, sitting next to total strangers, and we, it turned out we both grew up within three miles of each other. What are the odds? Anyway, she doesn't wear makeup at all. And she was saying how she wouldn't even know where to start at her age. And I said, then don't. <laughs> um, you have to do makeup that makes you feel comfortable. So if you your everyday look is a full face of makeup, then go for it. Do that full face of makeup. If your regular kind of makeup is just a little tinted sunscreen and some lip gloss, then that's your face. I don't think it's a one size fits all situation, but I personally enjoy and feel more comfortable wearing more makeup. Do I need it? Nobody needs to wear makeup, but I like it. So it was an interesting discussion. I got a little philosophical. It was also a beautiful evening. We finally got a break in the heat. It got down to 64 degrees, I think, that night while we were there. I think it dropped even lower as we, into the wee hours. But um, it was so nice to be outside, enjoy non-hot weather, feel that cool breeze. I believe I drew this eyebrow a bit thicker than that one. It shall do. Like I said, everyday look, I don't sit in front of the mirror with a magnifying glass and make sure everything looks just right. I also am one of those people that never touches up during the day. I, I'll touch up my lipstick, but that's it. Like I don't carry all the stuff with me. I'm just kind of like, once it's on, I don't think about it. So for eyes lately, I have been really changing it up and I've either been wearing only one shadow or maybe two. And the palette I've been reaching for the last few days, it's actually one I picked up during the anniversary sale and the whole set is still available on the Nordstrom website. So that's kind of cool. This is the MAC, view from the top eye kit. There's a light option and I think a medium or darker option. I went with the light. And I just love taking one of these shimmer shades and putting it all over my eye and then maybe defining a little with that in the crease. So that is what I'm gonna do. I have been reaching for this shade. I don't know what it's called. If you look at the palette, it's on the bottom, second from the left. And I usually just start by taking my finger and just putting it all over the lid. And then I sweep it up all the way, almost to my brow, especially on this outer part. That's been it. These shimmer shades especially are so creamy. They almost feel like they are a cream shadow. That's it. And then I will take a fluffy brush and kind of go around the edges. For the purposes of this video, I will add the second shade, but most days I'm just walking around like this and then we'll go to mascara. But I'm gonna add this sort of matte mid-tone brown. This palette strangely didn't get the best reviews. I think people, I think the people who do reviews are looking for these really intense artistic palettes and I get that, but sometimes you just want, and I think most of us, 
just want something basic and easy to reach for that doesn't require like a whole thing. You just be able to slap it on, reach for it, and know it's gonna work for you. I remember before I started YouTube, I had like one eyeshadow palette, maybe two, and I just used all those colors. And this is kind of that situation. You can do a lot of looks with these very basic shades. And I'll just do a little bit under the eye, that brown. Now lashes, I did add something new to that. First, let's curl. After I think two tubes of the Dior Show lash primer, which I really liked, I switched back to the Lancome version. I think it's called, I don't know what it's called, Lancome Seals something. It's down in the description box. A very thin tube, basically white lash primer. And I have to say, I think I like the Lancome one a little bit better. I like the wand and it seems to go on a little bit more easily and really cling to the lashes. Who knows? And I'm putting it on top and bottom lashes. I really should do one eye at a time. This is realistic in that usually I'm at this point rushing to finish the look and get out the door and so I don't take the time to do one eye at a time. I really like though concentrating on these outer corners because that's where my lashes tend to tangle and need a little more definition. And then for mascara, I've loved this for a very long time. It's the Wander Beauty Unlashed. I know that in a lot of videos I refer to it as Unleashed. It is Unlashed. I cannot talk and do mascara at the same time, so I'll be right back. This is classic. This should technically be applied before mascara so it doesn't wet your mascara and make it run, but I am putting on my setting spray. It's the Urban Decay All Nighter Pollution Protection. It says it has up to 16 hour wear, which is the like the original one, but it also says it has temperature control technology. It works. That's all I need it to do. Now, I don't know about you, but most of the time, if I'm just hanging around the house, I'm not putting on lipstick. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna do the full look. My all-time favorite lipstick shade is the Estee Lauder Pure Envy Lipstick in Impulsive. They discontinued it. I spent probably hours in the Nordstrom Beauty Department swatching, 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 trying to find a dupe. I found one that was really close, but they were sold out and I was impatient and didn't want to wait for it to get delivered to the house. And that's the, it's from the Lancome, I think it's the Mademoiselle line. I'll link it below. The shade is Shine Bright. But surprisingly, this one from MAC is actually pretty close, especially if you top it with a more pink lip gloss. So this is the MAC lipstick. It's a cream sheen in the shade Sellout. And it is a really nice peach pink. In our swatches, and it, I had like the whole beauty department wandering around helping me with this. It was like a quest. We were swatching like crazy, and this one was the closest. Now, normally, I would have to take you with me into my bathroom to go do my hair because that's where my hair stuff is set up and there's somewhere to plug in, but I took advantage of a recent Triple Points event at Nordstrom, used that as an excuse to purchase the Dyson straightener, the Dyson Corel. And if you're unfamiliar with the triple points thing, if you're a Nordstrom card holder, you always get points on the dollar for every purchase. And I think 2000 points equals a $20 gift certificate. Well, if you are an icon, I think, or an ambassador level, you get more than one point per dollar. It's, it's not an even swap. But on triple points days, I believe it was nine points for every dollar spent. So I use that as an excuse to buy the Dyson Corral straightener and I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert on it, but I'm gonna go grab it and show you how I've been using it and let you know sort of my initial thoughts because there is a learning curve and I haven't followed that arc just yet. Okay, this is typical. Yesterday, I washed my hair and blew it dry and it looked the way I wanted it. I don't wanna say it looked great, but it was a good hair day. Then I slept on it and it looks like this. So I tend to just brush it out and then I just do a little quick straighten. Now, there was nothing wrong with my previous straightener. I've had it for years. It's great, but there is something really convenient about the fact that this is cordless. Now, it does have a cord. You can use it plugged into the cord if you want. It also comes with this docking station. So as you're doing your hair, I set this out on the counter as you're doing it like you're here doing your hair. As I am doing my hair, I set this out on my bathroom counter and it sits in here and I keep the plug plugged into this side. So every time you set down the straightener to pull a new section or whatever, it charges up a little bit. 
so it extends the charge time. Now, the full charge time on this is only 30 minutes. I personally have never taken 30 minutes to style my hair with one, I just, I haven't, but that's using it cordless. You can plug the cord in to that end and plug it into the wall like a regular straightener and you can straighten all day long if you feel like it. So here it is, and the one question I've been getting is, is it heavy? No, I don't feel like I'm working out. Is it heavier than other straighteners? Absolutely, it's, it's a little more hefty, I would say, because it's got the chargeable battery in here. But I love how sleek it is. It does come with a travel pouch. When I bought it, I got it as a gift set, so it came with this and a comb, but I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So here she is, and I just pop it open with this lever button thing. And then there are three buttons. There's a power button and then a temperature gauge or you know higher or lower. There are three temperature settings. I believe it's 335, 365, and maybe 400 or 410. Traditionally, I've had to use it, other straighteners, at 400. Even though I have fine hair, it's stubborn, and that's what I need to do in several passes. I have noticed I can use this at 365, sometimes 335, and I get the same effect. So just the fact that I'm doing less heat damage to my hair is great because my hair is just, it needs some help. It's getting there, but it's not exactly where I want it to be just yet. All right, let's, I should have turned it on while we were talking. So you turn it on, shows you that it's on. I have a full charge right now and it's gonna ask me what temperature I want. I'll put it at 365 and then it takes a minute to heat up. And so I am not going to try curling my hair with this thing on camera because I'm still not there. I have, I'm going to try, I should say, to show you how I get a little body in this thing. What's neat, I don't want to touch it, but these plates are flexible. I mean, they don't bend, but they kind of move. So they're constantly gripping the hair and it does make it easier to straighten and you don't have to like do the death grip. <laughs> that we sometimes, ah, there we go, find ourselves doing when we straighten our hair. So I like that. I do find that it is easier to use. So what I want to do here is just get rid of some of this puffiness. And there you go. One pass, done. I'm so loving this. So I will just grab this. And I don't know if it's because it's cordless and you can just I mean, seriously, if I wanted to walk around the house with this, I could. I just find myself actually bothering to finish my hair more than I used to. And I'm using lower heat though, which I really like. So all I'm doing to get a little bend at the very end is just kind of pulling it away like so, especially the ends, they get a little weird. And I'm sure you all know, but just to remind you, I do have some hair extensions for thickness and it helps them blend together. I'm not even bothering to section my hair, but that's one side done. And then this is the side that's just kind of lame and limp. So let's do that. I really like how fast, I mean, it goes really fast. It does seem to make my hair a little bit shinier, although to be fair, blonde hair, especially fake blonde hair, doesn't reflect light like darker or natural blonde hair. So the shine just, it's not gonna be there. <laughs> but <laughs> it is pretty easy to use for just the straightening part. I have made some attempts to do like a full on curl, like a beach wave with it. And I will say, it is definitely a learning curve, but it's a smaller learning curve than other flat irons I have used for that. So I'm confident that I will be able to demonstrate that soon. I just haven't practiced very much. I like that this end doesn't get hot. I can grip it and I can do things and bend it. Let's see, is there any under pieces? It's really easy to use. I really like it. Now, am I gonna tell you to run out and buy a $500 straightener? I mean, no, but if you were thinking about buying this anyway and you wanted to know my opinion, then I would say I've been really pleased with it. I do not regret the purchase and I'm glad I bought it. Let me try to show you on one piece what I mean by how to straighten it. So 
they have all kinds of tutorials on their website. I'm trying to find a piece that's nice and long. I have no good long pieces to show you. My poor hair. Okay. Let's just take a random piece. I'll have to re-straighten it. You can, they say if you put it in and you twist your hair, I think it's 180 degrees. Yep, see I got that little bend? Uh, that's 180. Now if you want the full curl, you do a 360. So it's not impossible to do. And I do kind of like doing that on the layers around my face. See, so you get that nice little whoosh. So if you want to kind of fake the blowout kind of look, I didn't get that in there very well, did I? And it grips. <laughs> so you got to be ready to move. Let's do this. Okay, now I'm getting a little too curly here. Hang on. There we go. So you can, <laughs> it curls. Like I said, it's, there is a learning curve, but instant body. If you want your hair to have a little more body on the top, you can pull it up and kind of bend it around and you'll get it like that. I don't want to do that right now. I mean, you don't even have to try very hard. It's going to give you a little bit of bend. One other nice feature is even though I've just turned it off, I don't know if you can see this, the power light in the middle is actually blinking red even though I've turned it off. And that is to indicate that it is still hot. So they want you to rest it in its cradle before you put it away for when it's fully cooled down. Just a nice little feature. I'm gonna fix this side of my head. I was getting a little crazy. And then I'm gonna show you my outfit. Welcome to my bathroom. I've just laid out my outfit here, hung it on a little hook. This is a new to me sweater from Free People. I have it in a size small. I definitely recommend wearing your true size, maybe even size up. So I just got mine in a small. You'll see how it wears. If you get it, sizing it down like most Free People items that they recommend doing, it will end up being a crop sweater. Now, if you want a crop sweater, knock yourself out, but I do not. So I'm wearing that. The V is pretty deep. So I did pull out this cami to wear underneath it. I bought this years ago at one of the Nordstrom anniversary sales. And then I love these jeans so much. I got a pair in the anniversary sale. I went and bought another pair. These are the AG ex-boyfriend slims. So let me throw all this on and I'll show you what it looks like on. I'm trying a slightly new setup. I have actually ordered a mirror that will take up almost this whole wall. It's gonna make try-ons a lot more fun. Just dragged out my bedroom mirror out here. So this is the whole outfit. This is the sweater. As you can see how it kind of rises up. If I got an extra small, it goes up several inches. I even like to emphasize that little, do a little front tuck. And here are the jeans, and these are booties that I'm pretty sure are still available. I picked them up, of course, during the anniversary sale. Anyway, it's really casual. It's a deep V, and just a little bit of the cami peeks out, but it just makes me a little more confident that it's not gonna be anything too risque. And the nice thing is I can still wear a regular bra because all that is covered up by the sweater. So that is the final head to toe, get ready with me look from makeup, to hair, can you believe this curl? It really takes a curl well. To the final outfit, I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Nordstrom for sponsoring today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.